先生他知道会有贵客到访，所以出门远游了。Well, welcome to How to Deal with Unwanted Guests and Family Reunions 101. You know, Three Kingdoms, that brick-thick novel of more than a hundred chapters of tiny texts and twice the number of names you want to remember. Because apparently, everyone in here has a real name and a style name. But don't worry, after 95 episodes of constant screen reminders, I think you'll remember. So here we are, Three Kingdoms 2010 version. To be brief, this is a show that book purists will probably always hate, while the rest of us just don't know why. And to be totally honest, we don't really care either, because not that many shows about politics in sophisticated language could keep us awake, let alone keep us to four. Clock in the morning, binging. So, in summary, this drama is led completely by undateable men in all kinds of beers in their horses. So many scheming, cunning, crafty, goal-oriented guys that after this, you probably need to watch drama with a war leader who doesn't strategize just to find some balance again. It's 95 episodes of political struggles, epic battles, verbal trolling. Cao Cao, 极善用兵，攻击不是他的对手 And enough manly tears to fill ten pools. 相见何太急？胡说！我怎么会流泪 ？You get the idea. Now three states, three warlords, different destinies, despite similar ambitions. We have the one with the contagious laugh. <laughs> The one who's ready to trust any random guy he comes across, and the one who outlives the other two. But despite their dreams and wishes and effort, reality doesn't always go as they plan. The king of Wei makes plan, gathers manpower to conquer the other state and expand his domain. Something that by the end is conveniently done by this guy. The king of Shu just uses his、uh, charm and lets someone else make all the plans, of course. And his mission is to reunite the state and rebuild the world for his descendants. Something that's later on also done by this guy. And of course, Three Kingdoms is not Three Kingdoms without this man, the one and the only undefeatable strategist, philosopher, and meteorologist, the one who carries out his lord's wishes and uses almost one fourth of his life to conquer the Wei Kingdom. Who kind of gets stuck in the end because he can't get through this guy. We know, buddy. We can tell by the length of your beard. Now, straying away from conventional elements of the original novel, this show presents to you a more relatable side of these well-known characters, and also a lot of things about them you don't really see anywhere else. For example, attractive people keep getting attracted to Liu Bei for some reason. Even the calmest of men can throw a tantrum. Sometimes, even a legendary strategist is not sure what he signed up for. Being obsessed with your political enemy can make you sick and potentially ruin your marriage. The supposedly antagonist is actually nice to children, while our protagonist is totally not. Hey, 同志们，你这是干什么 ？And there goes your father of the year award. Now on to war. So despite the countless battles in here, each one has its own highlight to make it easier for the clueless to remember. Like the battle where we learn that sometimes a war general can be the best babysitter ever. The Battle of Red Cliff, where bromance is upheld to the extreme. Junchang, I've often seen in dreams the general. The battle that marks the unmatchable combinations of brilliance and recklessness. The battle where the great strategist kind of runs out of ideas and tells his enemy, "You fight like a girl," which of course doesn't work because it's this guy. Good clothes, good clothes, good sense. So we can ramble on and on till you get bored. But the point is, it doesn't matter if you like politics drama, just want to pass a school quiz on Three Kingdoms, or just can't bring yourself to open that thick novel. This show will make you remember a thing or two, like the laugh. <laughs> the eternally clueless face, the horses, the baby who somehow survives this, hey, and even this guy. <laughs>